Hi everyone, we're back with sessions 51. What if you were the nurse? Please excuse my voice today. The patient on a magnesium infusion, the patient with possible IV infiltration, and avoiding accidents in the clinical setting. So let's get started. Here we have a patient who has been identified with preeclampsia. You might ask yourself the question, what is preeclampsia? Well, it's not fully understood, the mechanism is not fully understood, but for the most part, it's considered to be um, a condition which occurs during pregnancy and is characterized by hypertension, protein in the urine, and usually the mother can have headaches, edema, which is swelling, and even possible seizures. Typically, these patients are taken into the hospital and the treatment is a magnesium drip. Well, here is a patient who is on a magnesium drip for that problem. And one thing is clear, she's not responding. Why? Because people on magnesium could possibly, side effects of magnesium can cause decreased level of consciousness, uh, decrease in respirations, muscle weakness. And as you can see here, uh, you get that hyperreflexia, which is the decrease in the tendon reflexes. What is used is uh, calcium gluconate is used, the antidote for it. Now let's talk about IV infiltration. It gets a little confusing sometimes because sometimes an IV is not fully infiltrated when a patient might complain of discomfort. Here is a situation where this patient is saying, nurse, since you hung my medication, I have terrible pain in my arm. Bear in mind she has a potassium IV. Potassium can be very irritating to the veins even when it's hung under the right circumstances. What does the nurse say? She said, she, I hung your IV using the five rights. That's so. Everything was done the correct way. But the problem is this patient is still in pain and is still uncomfortable even though the nurse was right. So where do you go from there? Well, here are some helpful suggestions. If you should have a patient in that position, you should really take the trouble to assess the site, find out well, how much discomfort this patient is feeling, and what could this nurse have done differently. Well, again, it's another helpful suggestion to stop the IV and flush the site to diminish with normal saline to diminish the discomfort and as uh, you documented and let the doctor know so that he at least knows that the potassium which was ordered was not being given by the correct route. You could not continue because of the circumstance and what could happen. Possibly he could order it by another route, which is usually maybe um, by mouth. Anyway, if you would like to know more about electrolyte imbalances, you might want to try the clinical setting step by step chapters 1, 6, 16, and if you rummage through the whole book, you'll see there are more chapters. How about if you would like to know more about preeclampsia and magnesium, I suggest you try sessions 24, electrolyte imbalances. And for more, there is, of course, that situation which is called clinical scenarios that could have been avoided, and that you will find at uh, dearnurses.com. There are just many different scenarios that you'll find about clinical situations that could have been avoided. I hope you have enjoyed learning something from this, and um, I know my voice is a little heavy today. Um, have a good week, and again, stay posted for more clinical information.